My name is Paul Leong. I'm uh, in private practice in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, I uh, appreciate uh, all of you being here. I appreciate uh, Dr. Waldman, uh, Dr. Chatham, Dr. Saltz for uh, uh, allowing me to uh, speak. I appreciate it. It's a great honor. So I'm going to talk to you this afternoon about uh, uh, microcannulas and the use uh, of uh, microcannulas for filler injections. And you know, you've heard quite a bit about uh, this topic here at this meeting, so I hope I can add a bit of value, but we've heard from some pretty esteemed guys on this topic, so let's see, uh, let's see if I can add something. I see. So I tried to advance the slide. Ah, so I have no, um, no compensation from anybody. There's uh, nobody paying me anything. So in terms of the uh, presentation content, uh, other than my gracious patience, who I deeply appreciate. So um, in terms of presentation contents, I'm going to be talking to you about uh, the advances and advantages of microcannulas, uh, what I perceive as some of the disadvantages. Nothing in the world is all plus and no minus. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of the types of microcannulas without identifying them commercially. I'll talk a bit about uh, some technique with some video, and then I'll share some examples of my work, and then we'll try to draw some conclusions. And so the concept's really fairly straightforward, isn't it? Um, instead of using, as this, uh, as this slide shows, it's uh, supposed to show two things fundamentally. It's a rigid piece of metal in a hypodermic needle as opposed to most cannulas, there's a variable uh, degree of this, depending upon which one you choose to use, but there's a high degree of flexibility, and then of course it's a blunted tip as opposed to a sharp tip. That's the critical difference. The advantage of microcannulas, in, in my mind, is that the number one advantage in the minds of our patients is that uh, bruising is uh, greatly reduced. And I think the difference is obvious. Uh, I think if anybody who uses it for even a day would note that difference. Swelling, in my view, it's about the same. I've heard some microcannula detractors indicate that, uh, that I, geez, I think the swelling is a bit more so with cannulas as opposed to needles. I think it's about the same. This is my feeling. Comfort level, I think, is improved, especially you, if you use this microdroplet uh, local technique that I'll show you. Um, I think it is true that it takes more time initially uh, to use the microcannula because there's a little bit more poking and prodding, and like anything, there's a bit of a learning curve. But I think, um, in my sense, it's about a draw, maybe even a bit less, once you get experience because there is less bruising. So I find I, I, I'm, I'm holding less pressure. You know, if you get a bit of a, a bleeder with a needle, you're inclined to hold pressure with your fingertip for a while, and you don't need to do that nearly so much. Other advantages. Um, Fundamentally, the microcannula, the blunt tip, passes through the planes of tissue, and after you have some experience, the planes of tissue that you want it to, not just the skin, but perhaps, for instance, in the tear trough area, through the orbicularis. And then, with a little bit of experience, I think it's quite, quite straightforward to keep the tip of the microcannula within this plane. Whereas, of course, with a rigid needle, you know, you can attempt to do this and you can get a sense as to where you are, but it's awfully difficult. The tip of the needle passes effortlessly through any uh, plane of tissue, so it's tougher. Okay. As a result of this, I think I can uh, do better in terms of reducing uh, Tyndall effect because I can keep it in a certain plane. I'm not, oh, the needle's just come out through the skin and shucks, there's some hyaluronic acid right there. In terms of sculpture and nodules. My sense of it is that if you're going to get nodules with sculpture, and there's many ways to diminish that, uh, that, uh, the incidence of that, but if you can stay in an appropriately deep plane, I think you put another variable in your favor. Uh, collagen formation, the folks who promote uh, microcannulas will tell you that by scooching that thing around in there, perhaps roughing things up a little bit, um, that you, you can promote some collagen formation. I can't pass an intelligent opinion about that. I'd have to see some data, and I think that's not out there. I think while I mentioned that my patients are very enthused about the lack of bruising, I think all of us in this room are very enthused about safety. Fundamentally, you know, we value safety tremendously. And I think that uh, while there's been fantastic and vigorous discussion about a microcannula is not a guarantee of avoiding a mi an intravascular event. Uh, Dr. Goldberg mentioned there was a recent event in the temple with a 22-gauge cannula that caused blindness. And so uh, nothing can be guaranteed, but certainly it seems intuitively obvious to me that you're going to have a much less chance, and, and I think to everybody in this room, of getting into a vessel and depositing 
a bolus of this. This is a busy slide, very briefly. It basically says uh, microcannulas are nicer, less bruising, etc. This is uh, the piece of literature that's been quoted quite a bit from the Korean literature indicating that using needles, uh, and it's not so much talking about tear trough, but into, into the nasolabial fold, into the glabella, that there is, there is a significant incidence of blindness. Significant, I shouldn't be so generalized. There's a rare incidence of blindness, but then Dr. Goldberg is telling us that it, and at Jules Stein, within a relatively finite period of time, they found a couple of cases, and, and therefore you, one suspects, like so many things in medicine, it's underreported. Disadvantages, well, there's a cost issue, but in my view, this is irrelevant, four to six dollars per cannula. Um, I, think, I think we can stand it for a better outcome for our patients. There is a bit of a learning curve I've referred, referred to. Is flexibility always a plus? I use quite a few 30 gauge cannulas, and it is flexible. And is, that, is the tip of it uh, exactly where you think it is, or has it sort of bent one way or the other? I think there's a learning curve around that. Um, filler material doesn't come out of the tip. I mean, who wants that? You have to make another approximation. Again, I think all of us, we've learned to be surgeons or advanced dermatologists. Um, I think you can compensate for those few millimeters uh, distance from the tip. Uh, you also sometimes have to poke through tougher planes of tissue. Um, and I do think every now and again, I just get to a part that's a little bit difficult. And I think my patients every now and again even note that I'm sort of struggling for just a second or two. I actually purposely involved a video that shows me struggling a bit. And so there is that. You don't encounter that with a needle. Um, some areas that are more challenging. What if you want to deposit, and I won't use any commercial names, but say a very thin hyaluronic acid into a very, uh, you know, say, intradermally. Is a cannula a great idea to do that versus a needle? No, I mean, you know, perhaps not. Okay, into some pictures. This is just illustrative. Obviously, you wouldn't do that with a needle. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, one of my patient care coordinators uh, pushing it into her finger. These are different brands. I've purposely sort of anonymized these, but uh, there's various brands. You'll hear sometimes strong opinions, one cannula to the next. I've used, I think, most of them. And what I tell you is this. To me, it's obviously better than needles. And any difference in terms between the cannulas is sort of relatively modest. I think the, the jump forward is with the cannula, not between the different cannulas. Some pictures, this is not a very, this is not an extraordinarily complicated technique. You can see in this picture here, um, I'm about to use, this is injecting sculpture with a 22 gauge cannula, which is a pretty big cannula. Um, before I did this, when I injected sculpture, I would fairly frequently get a decent amount of bruising. We almost never get bruising with sculpture now, no matter how much sculpture I inject. And so you, I put a little droplet of local in here, and so it's therefore a little bit blanched. I'm using a 20 gauge needle to make a small port there, and then that's the needle, and now we're using a 22 gauge cannula with a fanning technique. Everybody knows how to do this uh, with sculpture. Here's a little video. This is injecting a hyaluronic acid. Wonderful, so this is the little local bleb. I used to not do this, I find it quite helpful. It's a tiny bleb of local, obviously with epinephrine. And then we go to the next slide. Waiting a few minutes, you can see the blanching. I think I'm injecting here uh, with a 27 gauge cannula, so that's probably a 25 gauge needle. You make a small port. I'm picking up the cannula as we speak. And again, this is nothing, you know, after learning how to do a good lower eyelid blepharoplasty with fat transposition, this is something that everybody in this room can easily master. Okay, and very briefly, we'll just, this is fundamentally the same concept um, in the tear trough. Here in the previous example, I'm placing the hyaluronic acid in a sub-Q location. In this case, you'll see I make the little port. You'll see me struggle for just a second here. This is part of the reality um, of using cannulas. You've got to get back through the hole. So you can see I can't find it. Then I squinch the skin just a teeny bit. I get a tiny flash of blood. That obviously helps me visualize it. I scooch the cannula on through. I'm feeling with the tip of the cannula. I'm depositing this hyaluronic acid sub-orbicularis, which is where I like to put the majority of the filler in this location. Not all, but the majority. And so there's the outcome for this uh, very lovely young lady. You can see there's, oh, by the way, this is, this is 11 months post-procedure. And so you can see there's subtle recurrence, but this is 0.4 cc's of a hyaluronic acid into each tear trough 11 months later. And she's very happy. 
This slide is simply, I'm not going to talk about anatomy, but with the uh, blunt tip cannula, the cannula respects these fine fascial planes and therefore it changes the technique somewhat. The needle passes effortlessly through all of these, some of these relatively newly described and named structures, and the needle doesn't. Nothing to talk about here. We do non-surgical rhinoplasties with this. We do nasal labial folds. We do tear troughs with this. So quick conclusions. Microcannulas, I think, in my view, appear to be superior, um, perhaps with the exception of when injecting very superficially. There is an increase in cost, but goodness, four bucks, five bucks, I think we can stand it. Um, there is a bit of a learning curve, but it's very doable. You know, we do far more complicated things than this. Uh, I guess some of the other issues I want to speak to is, is why a, a lot of us are using this, but penetration seems to be rather slow in North America. As many of you have heard, our European colleagues are using this the majority of cases, and they grew up with needles like we did. I mean, they have this choice, they pay a little bit more money, and yet they're using it tremendously. I think it's because of the obvious advantages and also some of the safety advantages. The last point I want to make is, the point has been raised at this meeting that uh, in the tear trough, uh, geez, I think if you use a 30 gauge or a 27 gauge, it's almost like using a needle. And because of those safety concerns, you know, we use, you know, some people are indicating they use 25 gauge needles. I think the jury's very much out on that, and firm statements about that are premature. In my view, if you use a needle versus on this side you use a 30 gauge or a 25 gauge cannula, the difference between the cannulas are modest. The difference to the needle is enormous in, t in terms of improved safety. And if you talk to anybody in the convention center, they all, they all sell, there's three or four purveyors of this stuff. They sell a lot of these in Europe, and everybody in Europe uses a 30 gauge needle. S excuse me, I retract that. A 30 gauge cannula who uses cannula to inject the tear trough. So I don't think they want cataclysmic complications, and yet they're using that. So I, I think it's a little early to sort of pronounce concerns about one size of cannula versus the other vis-a-vis -vis intravascular complications. Thank you so much.